What's going on guys? It's Greg here, AKA New York Prepper. And I'm about to do a penetration test for the 416 Ruger, okay? 416 Ruger is a dangerous game rifle. This is the rifle you see here. It's uh, made by Ruger. It's a 20 inch barrel um, chambered in 416 Ruger. Okay, look at this big cartridge here. This thing is a monster, all right? It has over 5,000 foot-pounds of muzzle energy on this thing, okay? Um, it's a, this one is an expander. They come in two varieties. Um, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna be testing the Hornady, the uh, Hornady Dangerous Game, Dangerous Game series, okay? This is the, um, the Hornady factory ammo for the 416 Ruger because they partnered with Hornady. So Hornady was the first company to make 416 Ruger ammo. And here we have the uh, Dangerous Game Expanding bonded. And then we have the Dangerous Game Solid. This is a 400 grain bullet traveling at 2400 feet per second out of this barrel, the 20 inch barrel. All right, this thing is an absolute cannon. Um, I got a muzzle brake on it today. Uh, just because I, I haven't shot it without the brake yet and I want to keep it on just because I'm afraid the point of impact will change if I take the brake off. So I'm shooting it with the muzzle brake but the recoil will still be fierce and I got this uh, one to six power scope on here from Athlon and these are the cartridges. This is the uh, dangerous game expanding bullet. All right this is the 400 grain dangerous game expanding bullet it has a hard cast lead core which you can see coming off the front it has a flat nose it's got a steel jacket and then it has copper on top of the steel all right this is made for controlled expansion on big dangerous animals like cape buffalo or even up to an elephant or big bears you know where you need deep deep uh, penetration and controlled expansion all right, that's what this is made for. So we're gonna test the expander and we're gonna, most importantly, we're gonna test the solid, all right? And we're gonna be shooting into, we're gonna be shooting into some two by tens, okay? It's a mosquito here. This is the solid. This is a steel jacketed hard lead uh, bullet. So it has a hard lead core with a steel jacket over the front and it's a flat nose and it's just a solid, you know, this is the one that you use when you're trying to penetrate, okay? So we're gonna shoot at some two by tens. I'll show you in a second uh, the, the test media. We're gonna shoot at some two by tens that I cut to 18 inch lengths and we're gonna see how many two by tens it can go through um, the solid and the expander, all right? So take a guess, put it in the comments Tell me how many boards you think, how many two by tens you think it's gonna go through. All right guys, so we're gonna be shooting at these two by tens that I stacked up. Okay, I screwed them all together. These are two by tens. I'm gonna shoot these big old 416 Ruger rounds and see how many boards it can go through. Take a guess, I'm probably gonna say, my guess is it's probably gonna go through 20 boards. These are uh, Douglas fir. I had my friend help me, Mike. He screwed it together for me, all these boards. And it was a, a, a real pain to haul these things out here to the range, these are very heavy. But I, these are all screwed together with screws. It's just one solid piece, all right? These are 18 inch, 18 inches long and uh, these are two by 10 Douglas fir, okay? So you guys can see here, all right? So I'm gonna be shooting at a distance of 25 yards and we're gonna see how many boards this can go through. So pause the video and think about how many boards you think it'll take to stop an elephant gun, the 416 Ruger, and uh, write it in the comments. All right guys, so stand by for the test and thanks for watching. All right guys, we're gonna shoot the solid now. Take a guess how many boards it's gonna go through. Let's see how this goes.
perfect shot. Let's go check it out, see what happened. All right guys, so I hit the front here with the solid. Perfect shot right in the middle. And I walked around the side and I don't see any exits on the side anywhere. It didn't come out the side. It didn't come out the back, the back is clear. So it's somewhere inside these logs or these boards. So I gotta take this thing apart and we'll see how many boards it went through. Now I'm gonna also shoot the expander and see how many boards the expander went through. So stand by and let's uh, unscrew these boards and we'll see how many it went through. And hopefully we'll recover the bullet and we'll see uh, what condition the bullet is in. All right guys, I got some amazing results for you. This is absolutely insane. I, I blew my mind away the penetration of this round. Just before I get into that, I wanna show you the beautiful scenery here here in uh, the Catskills in upstate New York. We're in this uh, shooting pit area here. And uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous day today. So, all right, so what I did was these, these boards, all right, what I did was I assembled them, I screwed them all together in like four blocks, basically, blocks of, of what is that, eight. All right, so I have four blocks of eight here, right? So we got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right? And what I did was I screwed them together in, in sections, okay? This way, um, let me come around because there's a shadow here. I, I screwed them together in four, four sections of eight blocks, all right? This way it would be easier for me to judge rather than having to unscrew all of these boards because these are all screwed together. All right, every board is screwed together. There's four screws, one in each corner. All right, so one here, one here, and then on the bottom, all right? So rather than having to go through each single one to see where the bullet is, it's in four sections, all right? So we can quickly tell which quarter of the, of the block, you know, where it is, all right? So this is the front that I shot at, all right? You can see these big old screws that I used. All right, so this is the entry hole, all right, right here. I don't know if you guys can uh, see that, right? There's the entry hole, okay? You can see it actually split the first block a little bit, the energy, all right? But there's the little entry hole there, all right? So it entered this way, and then it went through like that, all right? So just doing the initial, uh, when I unscrewed these, okay, the first block, it went through the first three blocks, all right? So it went through, so the first block, here's the exit on the first block right there. All right, you see that little little hole right there? That's the exit, all right? This is the first block. Second block, I'll show you guys. There's the second block, a exit out of the second block, so that's 16 boards, okay? And here is the exit out of the third block right there. All right, let me show you the third block. All right, oh, whoops, it fell over. Sorry, guys. Ugh. All right, so here's the exit out of the third block right here. You see that little exit hole right there, okay? So now, but there was no exit out the last block, so it's somewhere in here, in this last block here, all right? So it so far it went through 24 two by tens, guys. This is absolutely impressive power. We're gonna see uh, how many boards it went through, okay? So stand by. But at least 24 boards right now, at least 24, and it didn't exit, so somewhere between 24 and uh, 32 boards. All right, so let's see exactly how many. 
All right, guys. So I disassembled the last last quadrant here, last last quarter. Uh, it went through the 25th board right here, and then it's stuck between these two. All right, the board, the bullet is stuck here. You could see the, uh, the entry hole here, and there's no exit on this one. So it's stuck between the, let's see, 26th and 27th board, okay? So it's somewhere, it must have lodged between these two. So it took at least 25 boards to slow it down. I'm going to split this apart now. The bullet is literally holding this together. Okay, this is the bullet is in there and it's holding it together. So I have to uh, split this and try to get the bullet out. And I'm going to weigh the bullet and see how much uh, weight it retained. All right. So, so it's somewhere between 26 and 27 boards. 26 and 27 2 by 10s to stop the 400 grain dangerous game solid 416 Ruger okay it went through all these boards that's 8 16 24 25 and it's stuck between 26 and 27 all right so that is absolutely impressive very very impressive stuff out of the 416 Ruger I would definitely not feel undergunned if I had to take down a T-Rex with this rifle um or if I had to stop a uh, tank, <laughs> if I had to do some uh, anti-material with this thing after SHTF. All right, so it's somewhere between 26 and 27 2 by 10s guys. You know, I, it's funny, I had a feeling, you know, uh, my friend Mike, you know, when we were building this together, I had, I only had 24 boards. And I told, I told Mike, I said, I think I'm going to need another eight boards because I think it's going to go through all 24 boards. I don't think it's enough. And he said, really, you think so? And I said, yep. I said, uh, I've shot a lot of big boards, and I know even the 4570 can go through a lot of boards. So um, I said, I got to get another, I got to get another eight boards. And uh, it's a good thing I did, because if I didn't, it would have exited. So now we have an exact m measurement here. So somewhere between 26 and 27 boards, all right? So stand by, I'm going to try to recover the slug and see if it deformed or uh, if it changed its shape at all, you know. All right, so stand by for that. All right, guys, so I'm going to split the 26th and 27th board with my hatchet because the, the slug is holding them together. So I got this uh, trusty hatchet of mine. I'm just going to try to see if I can't, see if I can't split it. Just little, okay, there we go. Look at that, guys. There's the slug. Look at that thick steel jacket on the on the bottom here. Look at that. That is absolutely impressive. This is a, a powerful, powerful rifle right here, guys. This is um this is absolutely insane. Alright guys, so here is the this is the 26th board. Alright, 26th board. And this is the 27th board, okay? Look at that slug in there. That is absolutely impressive. I'm gonna have to dig that out and weigh it and we'll see how much weight retention, uh, how much weight it retained. But I mean, just look at the, just look at this th thick steel jacket they have on the outside. I mean, that is that is impressive. You know, this is like, almost like armor piercing ammo here all right and it didn't it didn't even make a bump on the last one it's no no bump here it's just sticking out all right pretty pretty cool um you can see some of the rifling marks on the bullet actually you see those little little uh, marks there those are the rifling marks on the bullet but i mean just look at that steel jacket that is impressive all right so now i'm going to shoot the expander and we'll see how many boards the expander goes through. So stand by, guys. All right, guys. So we tested the solid, the solid Hornady, dangerous game solid 416 Ruger. Um, it went through 26 boards and stopped on the 27th board. So now we're going to test the, the dangerous game expanding bullet right here. Okay, 416 Ruger. It has a flat nose, hard lead core with a steel jacket. 
um, so it should penetrate pretty deep. So here we have 24, 24 2 by 10s These are Douglas fir, okay? 24 2 by 10s And let's go see how many boards this is going to go through the, the expander, the dangerous game expanding. Let's see how many boards. Take a guess. So let's, let's go check it out, and then I'm going to weigh both of the bullets when I get home and do a, uh, you know, see how much the weight retention was. All right, guys, so stand by. All right, guys, so the shot was perfect. Uh, here's the shot from the expander right here. And so let's take apart these boards and see how many it went through, okay? Uh, I actually didn't get a chance to take a video of me shooting. I was in a rush and I forgot to record myself shooting. So you, you're not going to see me actually shooting. You'll see a, you saw a clip of the, of the camera close to the boards. So I apologize for that. I'm going to take these boards apart and we'll see how many it went through. Stand by. All right, guys. So it looks like the dangerous game expanding bullet, the 400 grain dangerous game expanding bullet. It only made it through uh, seven boards and it got stuck in the eighth board. All right. So let me show you guys. It got stuck in the eighth board. Okay. And you can see it was actually tumbling. So this is the eighth board here. This is the seventh board here. All right, let me see if I can show you guys real quick. This is the eight, the, the slug is right there. Looks like it tumbled. I'm going to try to recover it and get some uh, weight measurement on that to see uh, how much weight, how much weight retention it has. But it looks like it tumbled. This was the seventh board, so it came in and it's it tumbled. Here's the sixth board. This is the sixth board right here. All right, so six, seven, and then eight. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, the expander. I'm going to weigh the bullets now, and uh, I'll, I'm going to unscrew all the boards and show you guys um, how good the penetration was. But one thing I will say is that the, the bullets were able to maintain a straight line penetration, which is very important, um, especially the solid. You know, the expander, it tumbled, but the solid, it just went straight through the wood like a laser. And that's what you want, because if you're you know, targeting a big dangerous animal and you're aiming for the vital area, which is hidden behind, you know, layers of muscle and bone and fat and hide. You know, if you're aiming for the heart lung area on a big dangerous animal like a bear or Cape Buffalo, you want to make sure that that bullet goes straight through the animal, you know, exactly where you're aiming, because if it starts to drift to one side or the other, the bullet could tumble and miss the vitals and you won't have a clean kill. You won't have a clean kill, which is for, you know, number one, obviously for hum humane purposes, you want the animal to go down quickly. You don't want it to suffer. And number two, you know, you don't want a wounded, you know, thousand pound bear, you know, 50 yards away from you. You know, where do you think it's going to take out its anger? It's going to charge right for you. So you want that bullet to go straight through and, and, you know, these, these bullets here maintain straight line penetration, uh, especially the solid, which I'll show you guys in a second when I undo the boards. And I'll show you guys how it maintained the straight line penetration through all these boards. But even the expander, the expander maintained a mostly straight, 
path, but then it tumbled at the end and it started to go, uh, you know, kind of vertical. So, but for the first few boards, first five to six boards, it maintained a straight line and then it just tumbled at the end. So, um, so stay tuned. I'm going to take all these boards apart and we're going to go through each board and see the devastation, but I'm really impressed with this rifle. I'm very happy with the results. I didn't expect it to punch through 26 or 27 boards, uh, especially the solid. All right, guys, so I'm back at the man cave now, and I disassembled all of these boards, which I screwed together. All right, and this uh, 400 grain dangerous game solid went through 27 boards. All right, it went through all of these boards, guys. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely insane? This is 27 2 by 10s cut to 18 inch lengths. All right, this bullet went through all of these boards. All right, so I'll, sh I'll go through each board so you guys can see. But this is an absolutely massive penetration. You're looking at 40 inches of Douglas fir that this bullet uh, punched through and I recovered the slug all right this is the 400 grain dangerous game solid here that you see okay let me uh, put it down here so you can see it better all right so you can see it's pretty much intact there's a couple of scratch marks on it as you notice and that's just from when I was uh, trying to pry it out of the wood it was stuck in the wood pretty pretty uh, deeply and I couldn't just pull it out with a plier so I had to actually uh, use a pry bar to try to pry it out and uh, so I scratched a little bit of the copper jacket on there you can see the rifling mark on the bullet here you see the little rifling marks alright um, going towards the base of the bullet you can see the rifling marks there alright but this bullet is uh, fully intact there's no deformation whatsoever even on the nose if you look at the nose right there the nose of the bullet has no deformation whatsoever not even a single scratch or dent or anything like that okay it's pretty much perfectly intact um, I'm really impressed with the construction of this bullet you can see on the base here the steel jacket is quite thick alright in the center you have that that lead core that I told you guys about and then surrounding that lead core is a is the steel jacket which you can see and then it has a light light uh, copper uh, jacket over the steel you know just to protect the barrel of your rifle um, so you guys can see how thick that steel jacket is I mean that's probably you know if I were to measure you know you're looking at probably an eighth of an inch thick you know and uh, let me actually what I'll do is I'll actually measure it and here was the expander okay so here's the expander alright so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna measure these bullets and then weigh them alright and we'll see uh, how much they weigh but I'm just really impressed with this uh, dangerous game solid. There were a lot of guys on the internet that were saying that this this solid, you know, doesn't pass through bone and it deforms and things like that. I mean, so far I haven't had any problems with with it on you know 27 pieces of Douglas fir. But uh, I will try to shoot this at some harder objects next time. I'm going to shoot this at some cinder blocks maybe or concrete blocks or uh, I may even get some uh, some some harder um, items like metal or something like that to see how it if it deforms but I mean if you look at that steel jacket how thick that steel jacket is I mean that thing is just not there's no way you're gonna be able to bend you know d there's no way this is gonna deform alright with a steel jacket that's th that's this thick alright I thought the steel jacket was very thin um, but if you look at how thick that jacket is, I mean, that is, you know, it's, there. that's not going anywhere. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty much like an armor piercing bullet right here. All right. And, uh, then you have this expander and you can see the expander, how big it, how big it got in comparison to the solid, you know, it pretty much doubled in, in diameter, which would cause a much larger wound channel. All right. So, um, I'm going to take a measurement. And take some measurements with the calipers. I want to uh, go over all these boards and show you guys the the pass through. So this was the first board here. All right, it's board number one. There is board number two. 
There's board number three. Board number four. Board number five. Board number six. Board number seven. Board number eight. Board number nine. Board number 10. Board number 11. Board number 12. Got 12 boards already. 13, board number 13. Board number 14. Board number 15. Board number 16. And this is cracked because I shot it with the uh, expander on the, I, I shot the other side on the, uh, with the expander here. Um, so that's why it's cracked. So just ignore that crack. So this board number 17 here, okay? Board number 17. Board number 17. Okay. Board number 18. The hole is, is right here. You can't really see it because, again, I shot this board with the expander and nearly in the same area. It's board number um, 18 here. Board number 19. Board number 20. Board number 21. Board number 22. Board number 23. Board 24. Board 25, right there. Board 26. Alright, and then now we have board 27. And that's where the bullet was in that hole right there. And as you saw, I, I had to dig it out. Um, let me just show you guys how it was sitting. It was sitting like this. All right, the bullet was about halfway in. All right, so I'm going to call this 20. So it went through 26 boards. All right, 26 2 by 10s All right. So, and it pretty much went through at a straight line. Um, I was shooting a little bit on an angle because the way the shooting range is, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of angled. All right. So, um, you know, there, there's a slight, there was a slight angle, but it went through pretty much almost in a straight line. It actually went through in a straight line. And that's exactly what you want with a dangerous game um, rifle. You know, you want straight line penetration. You want the bullet to go exactly where you need it to go. You don't want it to drift off and, and hit other parts of the uh the animal that you're shooting at you know you want it to go straight through into the area that you want it to go to all right so straight line penetration here and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to weigh the bullets i'm going to take some measurements and i'm also going to compare the first board to to the last board just to show you guys the difference and show you how how it pretty much stayed in a straight line so stand by for that all right, guys, so the board on the right was the first board, all right, and then this was the last board where the bullet was embedded in, the 27th board. So you can see it, it drifted a little bit um, down, okay? It, it looks like it just it didn't go to the left or anything. It looks like it's pretty much kind of just by eye. You know, you can see that it's it didn't really drift off to the left. It just drifted down, and that's just because of, that's just because of the angle. That's just because of the angle that I was shooting at, okay? I was shooting at, if you look at the video, it's a slight, slight angle. The way that the range is, it kind of angles down towards the, the shooting pit where I had my target set up. So I was on a slight incline. I was shooting on a, on a downward angle. All right, but you can see it didn't drift to the left or drift to the right. It didn't shoot out one of the sides. You know, it, it pretty much was a sh perfect straight line. You know, it went down three inches. And then again, that's just because of the angle, all right? But it stayed pretty much in the same straight line you know so that that's a very reliable bullet and that's exactly what you want for dangerous game this is an excellent bullet for bear protection if you live in Alaska or Montana um, you know if you're going into Africa this is obviously made for African hunting I don't doubt that this would be able to stop an, a charging bull elephant a charging rhino or a charging Cape Buffalo, I have no doubt in my mind. If it can go through all that wood, okay, I have no doubt that this thing can get through, you know, a, a rhino skull or rhino shoulders or an elephant skull, um, big bull elephant. So, all right, and I've unscrewed all the boards for the expander. Okay, these are the boards that the expander penetrated through. It penetrated through eight 2 by 10s All right, but I want to just go through each board and show you guys the, the holes that it made. 
So this is the entrance hole to the first board. There's the exit hole on the first board. So it's not the exit hole is not that big yet, but it starts to get bigger now. Look at this hole for the second board. It's getting bigger now. All right. Look at this exit hole on the second board getting getting big. Now look at this guys. Look at this giant hole. All right. I could put my thumb in there. That's the entrance hole to the third board. There's the exit hole of the third board. There's the entrance hole to the uh, fourth board. Okay. Exit hole of the fourth board. Entrance hole of the fifth board. Exit hole of the fifth board. Entrance hole of the uh, sixth board right here. You can see it's starting to tumble at this point. You can see it's getting a little bit uh, more, more narrow vertically. There's the exit hole of the sixth board. You can see it's more vertical shape. Seventh board, you can see it's already, the bullet's pretty much already vertical at this point. Um, and uh, still doing a lot of damage though, even though it tumbled. Alright, there's the exit hole to the seventh board. And then here we have the last board, alright? So it got stuck in the eighth board. It did actually maintain a straight line penetration. So just to show you guys, this was the entrance, the entrance hole to the first, to the um, expander. Okay, this was the entrance hole to the expander. Uh, ignore this hole. This is from the solid that I shot earlier, but this is the expander hole. I want to show you the expander entrance hole and compare it to the the last one. Okay, the last board where the bullet is lodged in. All right, and you can see just by comparing, you know, it, it's pretty much straight line. It went through all these boards in a straight line. You know, it didn't drift or anything like that. All right, guys. So I'm going to measure these bullets now. Let's just take some little uh, measurements here. So first we'll just measure the base, you know, just to see if the base pretty much kept its size 416, which is what this caliber is, 0. .416, so that looks good. Um, now let's just measure the overall length of this bullet, just because I'm curious what the overall length is. This is a long bullet, guys. One, almost an inch and a half long bullet here. Alright, this is absolutely monstrous all right the bullet itself is bigger than a 44 almost as big as a 44 magnum all right and actually what i'll do is i'll go and get a 44 mag so you guys can see all right guys so here's the 44 magnum this is a this is a 300 grain uh bear load from underwood which i'm going to be doing the board test with next um, 300 grain 44 mag bear load and the the 44 mag the whole cartridge the whole case is barely barely bigger than the, the just the bullet of the 416 all right just look at that 416 is pretty much almost the same size as the 44 mag the whole cartridge all right and the 44 mag is obviously nothing to sneeze at it's extremely powerful round all right but just look at look at the, the size of that 416 bullet you know it's almost as big as a 44 magnum i mean that is just utterly impressive in my opinion i mean that is just monstrously powerful all right so now i'm just going to measure the expander and we're going to see how much the expander opened up and to see how much bigger it is than than when the uh to compare the expansion to the standard size, the 416 size, we'll compare the expansion, see how much it expanded. Alright guys, so we're going to measure, we're going to measure the expander, see how much it expanded to. Expanded to 0.6 inches on one side, roughly. And then on, let's see, it's kind of like a, kind of like a weird shape. It's kind of hard to get so it's you know you're looking at almost three quarters of an inch of expansion here right at the widest point if you count the pedals you know if you count the pedals in your measurement you're looking at a quarter, three quarters of an inch so it almost doubled in size all right that's that's absolutely impressive and scary uh, I would never want to be hit with something like this um, you know this will do some massive damage to anything, but this is the kind of uh, expansion that you need for large, dangerous game. You know, the wound channel that this thing is going to create is just going to be monstrous. All right. Um, you know, so here we have 0.7, so roughly 0.7 inches it opens up, 
at the widest point if you include the pedal it's almost three quarters of an inch so all right guys so stand by for the weight measurement we'll see how much weight these things retained all right guys i got my reloading scale here it's a uh, lyman scale it's very accurate um and we're gonna weigh these bullets now so this was the 400 grain dangerous game solid with the steel jacket look at how thick the steel jacket is and the lead core um all right this is the uh penetrator that went through 26 boards and got lodged in the 27th board in my test so let's weigh it here and we have 397.8 grains so we'll just round up to 398 grains uh, of weight retention. So it only lost two grains, um, which is very good. And some of that could just be me prying on it. You see these scratches here. Uh, I was trying to pry it out of the wood. So it might have lost a little bit of uh, material when I was trying to pry it out of the wood. But, you know, pretty much 99% weight retention uh almost 100 percent weight retention on this solid here dangerous game solid after shooting through 27 2 by 10s douglas for 2 by 10s all right so that's very impressive the expander was also very impressive results on the expander um it ended up weighing 350 grains so it only lost 50 grains that's uh 87 percent weight retention okay so I'll just weigh it for you guys right now so you can see it's about 350 grains uh, so it lost 50 grains that's nothing that's really nothing um, that's very excellent weight retention and uh, I'm gonna be testing these bullets against some other materials obviously wood is not the best material to test um, for weight retention because wood is fairly soft um, you know, if I shot some concrete blocks, I'm sure the, I probably would have lost a little bit more from this expander, but you know, you can see the, uh, the steel pedals peeled back and did what they were supposed to do. And, uh, it was, a uh, and the, the core stayed with the jacket, you know, uh, Hornady bonded the core with the jacket. This is the dangerous game expanding bonded version so about two years ago in 2018 they came out with the bonded version because the initial dangerous game expanding bullets they didn't bond the core to the jacket and i don't know if they just forgot to do that uh because they were in such a rush to get it on the market and they forgot to bond them but there were a lot of guys that were complaining about the jacket separating from the core but as you see that's not an issue anymore um it looks like I may have lost one of the pedals here. They may have broken off. Um, all right, but as you see, it's uh, 350 grains, so it's about 87% weight retention. And it penetrated through seven Douglas fir 2x10s and got lodged in the eighth 2x10. So that pretty, that pretty much concludes this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this penetration test. I'm going to be testing some other 416 Ruger ammo. Um, I have a Barnes 400 grain triple shock X that I'm going to be doing the board test with as well. And I also have a, uh, I may do a test of the Barnes banded solid, a 400 grain Barnes banded solid. And I may also test a Lehigh Defense uh, mono metal uh, copper zinc alloy 350 grain. And I'll do some penetration tests on those as well. So stay, to, stay tuned to my channel. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more penetration tests for the 416 Ruger and for other cartridges. I'm going to be doing a lot of 44 Magnum penetration tests. I'm going to be doing 4570 penetration tests. Um, a lot of other firearms too, okay? 500 Magnum as well. All right, so thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you have any ideas on what you want me to, 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 to test, send me an email or write a comment in the video, uh, in, the, in the comments down below the video. 
and uh, let me know what you want me to do with these bullets. Um, I would like to test these bullets again through some, some harder material like a uh, concrete block and maybe put the concrete block in front of the wood to see how these bullets retain their, um, their, their shape against a harder object instead of just wood and how much uh, weight they retain. But so far, I give these bullets um, an, a, an A rating based on the wood tests. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.